Hi there, this is Stacey Barr and I have with me today Mimi Stiles um, and she's from a rather special organisation based in Austin, Texas in the United States and her organisation is called Measure and it started off as a project in 2015 when um, Mimi challenged the Austin Police Department to show me the numbers uh, that they were using to report the results of agency performance measures. Now realising the disconnect between the department's um, big data reporting and the community, Mimi prompted me to, uh, prompted to, um, was prompted to create a methodology uh, to measure community policing. And now I first actually became aware of all of this when Mimi emailed me completely out of the blue, um, simply to let me know that uh, my performance measurement method pump was part of her inspiration to start her organisation. No, so naturally, you can understand why I'm really excited to learn more about what Mimi and her team um, at Measure are doing with measurement to make an important difference in their community. So Mimi, thank you for giving us some of your time to share your story. Thank you, Stacey. It's an honor to be to be um, on this call with you and to be able to share. It's been amazing. It's been a um, it's been a lot of ups and downs because of our focus at Measure. Um, we deal with social activism and advocacy, um, but using the pump methodology has really made things um, quite simple in terms of opening up communication that typically would not have been without it. That's brilliant. So how about we start with, with you telling us a little bit more about Measure in Austin, what it does, and, and your role since you founded the organization. Absolutely. So, so Measure is a 501c3 nonprofit. We use data um, and public education in order to address more so complex social problems. Some of those problems include um, education equity, um, again, community policing, which I hope we'll, we're going to talk about today, um, and then also um, just mobility from poverty. And just looking at some of the issues that impact mostly people of color uh, in, in America um, and more specifically right here in our own neighborhoods and just using um, just, you know, using performance measurement and data in order to to um, to better assess them. So I'm glad to say that measure did start off as a project, but now we are we're a full nonprofit um, that seeks to change behaviors, laws, policies, and ordinances as they pertain to people of color um, and interactions. Uh, the organization, of course, we are data-driven as we strive to use fact-based research and advocacy on behalf of certain segments of the population. Um, our efforts are innovative, thanks to you, um, <laughs> within the ecosystem of social justice entities as we encourage um, folks that look like me to be the data collectors and the storytellers. And quite honestly, I mean, far too often, we are not the ones that own the data. Um, it's told to us. So through pump through the development of, of collaborative performance measures, we're really able to identify problems and then create a few actionable measures to hold the system truly accountable. That's just a brilliant purpose. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so there are several challenges, right, like that we're hoping to address um, and that actually we are addressing right now through this method. Um, some of those challenges include, you know, policies and practices that are just outdated um, and they end up having a, a differential impact on, on people of color. There's a lack of trust between the community um, and institutions that serve them because of this. Um, and then not only that, but without data, we are left to, to rely on anecdotal um, solutions, per se, uh, that are usually easily dismissed. But that that comment you meant about uh, uh, about trust, about trust between community members and institutions, I love when data can serve a role to to work on that kind of trust, build it. Absolutely, and I mean, what what I've learned so far, Stacy, is um, I mean, everyone has seen what America has gone through, um, very specifically within the police community and the community at large. 
and people of color and, you know, their kind of inability, right, to really communicate well. Um, and so what I'm hoping to see from Measure is that police trustworthiness, you know, we talk about police trust all the time, but that mm -hmm. police trustworthiness is increased. That means that we'll see police legitimacy increased. Um, that means that we'll see more collaborative um, projects together. And um, and honestly, it's, you know, it's been since for the last, I guess, three years or so after the Mike Brown incident here, um, has have we seen in Austin just a dramatic change in community policing? Um, and I say again, a lot of that has to do with the Measure Austin project. Um, what we ended up doing was that uh, we we brought together an equal number of police officers and community stakeholders and activists, and we put everyone inside of the room and we said, okay, look. We know that there are problems. We see the historic problem, you know, the historic issues that are, you know, kind of bubbling to the surface now. And quite honestly, we don't really believe that real trust has ever been there. But what can we do um, in order to assess this issue and come up with solutions together? Um, and so that's how that's how Measure Austin has been successful so far. I love that focus on collaboration. It's great. Awesome. Yeah. So our our group, you know, we again we we uniquely partner with historical black colleges and universities, um, local community colleges, other colleges, um, to really create a a new pipeline. We always talk about a pipeline in America. I don't know if you guys have heard this rhetoric yet, um, but we talk about like the school to prison pipeline a lot um, okay. our way. But what we're trying to create is a pipeline of black and brown researchers and data storytellers using what um, what we call the care model. <laughs> and it's pretty cool, right? So it's our way of creating research that does not create community harm. So, wow. yeah, and a lot of times, you know, we, again, just like how there's just like a couple of big wigs that typically go in and create performance measures in their little tiny office while not involving the community, um, uh -huh. you know, things like that can happen in terms of creating programming for a community without having them involved. But the care model, kind of rejects that whole notion. And we say, we're gonna have a group of community members. And when we say community, we also mean the police. <laughs> they are also part of the community. Indeed. Um, yes, ma'am. And we, we break everyone up into four separate categories. So the C stands for community. The A is for advocacy. The R is for resilience, and then the E is where we we um, plop in the performance measurement and evidence-based um, policing tactics or evidence-informed research and data um, in order to address one systemic problem. Oh, that's neat! Perfect that the acronym is CARE. But the, each each of the you know those four pieces of it uh, just makes so much sense and. The feeling that I'm getting, Mimi, is um, this this really is innovative in the way that you're thinking about how research should happen and particularly how much the, uh, the, the right stakeholders can be involved in it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, I actually, we, we sat, I was sitting with my partner, um, who's like the other side of my brain. Um, his name is Eric Bird, and he um, he's into behavioral therapy. He's also um, into education um, equity and things of that nature. And we sat down and we were, uh, you know, waiting. We were working on creating an agenda for a project that we were going to go and on with Austin Police Department. And I said, Gosh, how are we going to go into this community and not um, cause more harm. And he was like, well, we have to be careful, you know? And I said, you know what? Care, that's it. And we just started yeah. breaking down that acronym and found that this would, this is truly the best way um, in order to involve the community in the process of creating um, 
metrics that are actionable, that are meaningful, and that are memorable. Um, and that can actually create the change that they want to see. This is a brilliant framework. I love it. And I mean, it, it's innovative. Um, I am getting more and more curious about uh, how, how Pump has sort of uh, played a role within this. Um, maybe we could start, Mimi, with, uh, with what brought you to Pump and how long you've been using it for. Absolutely. Yeah. So in 2015, I had a really great friend um, that I was in coworker um, who was working on transformation and risk and compliance. Um, and she told me that I had to learn more about this amazingly lean methodology to create performance measures. Now, I got to be completely honest with you, Stacey, when she told me that I was like, oh, my gosh, like, you know, at that time, I I was, um, and I am, I'm an activist, so you can find me on any weekend, you know, leading a march and so forth. That's that's where I was at that point in my life, um, protesting the system. <laughs> and so performance measures, needless to say, that was not really something on my mind, right? Um, <laughs> I can understand. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, but I had to do it <laughs> for my job. So yep. I did. I, I I got the book. I delved into I delved into it. I learned. I got certified. Um, and then just like a couple of months later, I ended up leaving that job to become a, a privacy officer. <laughs> so really, I was a little yes. Yeah, so I I knew that I wasn't really going to be using that same um that you know I wasn't going to be doing performance measures in that next job. Although I know that I can. So, uh, but <laughs> but instead. I just, I, I didn't want to lose those lessons that I was taught. So I decided to apply it to the work that I was doing outside my volunteer work um, to build trust in ecosystems of police accountability, legitimacy and community organizing. Wow, what a backstory. <laughs> That's, um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I do, I do hear from time to time people saying a similar thing to you, like, oh, I was, I was off doing all this exciting stuff <clears throat> and somebody mentioned I should do measurement and, and do pump and I thought, what? No way. And then they find out that, that pump is kind of an approach to measurement that's not really like they expected. And I'm, I'm hoping you had that experience and maybe you did because measure is, is using pump. So how does your organisation measure, use pump um, internally? maybe in um, uh, f for your own um, management, but also using measurement to influence community policing and, and education equity and, and poverty, like you've mentioned. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's best to tell a story to answer that question. So um, in 2015, after having a very heated debate about the lack of community community policing measures, um, I went to work to apply the pump methodology to that exact issue. Uh, we convened a measure design team that consisted, again, of an equal number of community activists and an equal number of police officers in one room. That was not easy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, but you know, unfortunately, we did not have the luxury of like several weeks to go through each process, but we were able to apply the concept to the development of three strong measures that laid the foundation to, to more so data driven policing um, and community collaboration in Austin. Um, I, I sometimes I, I say this and I don't know how the, how my cop friends feel about this now, um, but I, I, you know, I took the, the results map and I took the methodology and made it so simple that even a cop can do it. I say that. All oh, the good time. grief. <laughs> um, they, I don't know if they like that too much, but they, you know, anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but so, so basically what that means, though, is that we just we need we knew that we did not have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, we were, you know, if I can kind of bring my mind back to this point in, our, in my life and my activism and so forth. I mean, we were literally dealing with um, and we are literally dealing with the notion of police officers using power um, against a community that feels and that are oppressed by systems that are mm -hmm. that are systemically um you know have been systemically against a particular people you know people so i knew in my mind that you know i did not have a lot of time i needed to create 
communication that had never been there before. And I needed to do it in a strategic way. Um, and so the pump methodology and the results map, oh my gosh, we love the results map, was the answer. <laughs> like it just was the answer. So on day one, um, we defined our goals and we mapped measurable results. And then on day two, we talked about the old ways of designing measures and then we use the um, your amazing pump measure design template to design the measures that assessed and addressed their goals. And then on day three, the team tested their measures for feasibility and relevance. Um, and then on day four, although I really wanted to have a measure gallery, um, instead yeah. what we did is that we worked to create the buy-in with the command staff um, of the Austin Police Department. And we presented the created measures and solicited their feedback. So, um, you know, the, the pump process helped measure to establish these goals and to, and to like translate the strategy that came from the people um, and from the officers involved into like focused and measurable performance measures. And today the same process is being revamped um, and used to identify key metrics that'll help us to, to keep advocating for social justice in the form of like education equity, access to healthcare, mobility from poverty, community policing, and I mean, who knows what's next for measure. I love this application of good measurement practice, you know, to respectfully and collaboratively involve the right people um, and get them to a point where everyone's bought into it and you can make a difference with it. It's so exciting. I love it. So Mimi, what, um, can you share some examples um, of the goals that, that you're measuring and, and how they're being measured? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess my favorite example is one um, that it's, it's actually a project that we're doing um, in Pflugerville. And that's actually a place, so <laughs> Pflugerville, Texas. <Okay. laughs> um, <laughs> and so, yeah, so our work with in Pflugerville, with the Pflugerville School um, District Police Department, um, is really an amazing example of how the pump methodology is really transforming things and it's how it's how it's going to transform even more. Um, so again, another story. Um, so sadly, during 2016 and the 2017 school year, we found that over 54% of the assault charges filed in Pflugerville ISD were against black children. And so that to me is a startling fact when you consider that black students make up only 16.8% of the district oh, student wow. body. Yeah, so. Very disproportionate. Extremely disproportionate. Um, and so, I mean, while we know that the injustice is multifaceted, it, you know, it's for us, it's a very simple goal, right? Like no children mm -hmm. are charged with assault. We can talk about early criminalization and what that does to a child all day long um, and mm -hmm. you know what we did was we took that goal and we our our one and only measure there was the percent decrease in the number of black children charged with assault each year yeah, um, yeah super basic um, and so you know in order to achieve that we had to work again collaboratively we worked with the police department there um, and we worked with parents and we worked with community organizations um, in order to gain that buy-in that this is the goal that our community wants to see we you know um, and then we we then relied on the Pflugerville ISD police department to to update our team um, with the numbers of charges uh, that honestly we've seen a dramatic decrease in the number of charges since getting the community involved in the process um, this work to me is pretty phenomenal in terms of results so far of course we want years and years to be able to really to act to accurately measure it but just in one just since just because we said this is our measure and this is what we're going to do the school started to get really active and finding alternative solutions to kids that are having behavioral problems. Um, in many schools, we saw that the number of charges dropped by 50% um, in oh. terms of, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, that's, it's just amazing. So uh, in terms of black children, we saw 
an 11% decrease um, uh, in the number of assault charges, and that's cumulative. Um, overall, you know, measure is dedicated to putting pressure on districts to continue this positive reform that's really changing the statistics. Just on the statistics that you've mentioned, Mimi, and, and this particular measure, one of the things that a lot of people talk to me about is the unintended consequences of measuring something, that when you measure something, you can drive the wrong behaviour. But a thoughts occurred to me in the way that you, you get the right people involved and give them ownership of, of choosing the goal, choosing the measure, um, and and deciding for themselves ways to to improve it. That that really balanced community involvement, I think, is one of the biggest ways that we can stop unintended consequences, like doing the wrong thing to get the number to change, but rather doing the right things to get the system to change. Absolutely. And what what it also does too, Stacey, is that it it allows us to to move in a way that's so strategic that we see if something is not working right away. Because now yeah. we have community members that are paying attention to data, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> they are right. actually caring about the numbers. I mean, we have taken um, that gut emotion out of the scenario when we talk about data and numbers. And now we're just focusing on driving that, driving towards our target. Um, and everyone is involved in the process of doing so. Beautiful. Thank you. You know, there, there's also, um, you know, in, in Austin itself, we're, we're also working to make the city um, police department even more evidence-based. So I can tell you a little bit about how we're doing that too. Please. Awesome. Well, our team um, has worked with several community groups to develop um, a community, to develop community policing measures um, to carry out a community policing mission. So uh, we at Measure uh, provided the city council um, a report that then informed a resolution called item 47 um, that was passed at City Hall, largely due to the efforts of our team and the pump method of performance measure development. Um, we knew that with the right metrics that the police department in Austin would be able to tell a more accurate and a more useful story in the department's performance. So. Mm -hmm. You know, just as an example, a couple of those measures um, are like the percent reduction in the overall use of force and deadly force at the police department, the percent and number of interactions leading to critical incidences. Um, and so we're like pretty amazed that the city council then voted again unanimously yes to develop measures using some of these example measures that our group provided to them and they're working now to do so. Oh, you're clearly getting some great buy-in and no doubt that's because you're coming from the right place. You've got, you know, you know, uh, um, a, an organisational purpose that really resonates with what, the, what all parts of the community seem to want more of. It's just tremendous. Um, Thank you. Mimi, what impact have you had so far then in, in reaching goals like these? Um, so our, our impact has been pretty vast um, and wide. Um, and so we've been able to, again, we've consulted with the city of Austin. And mind you, Stacey, let me just let you know, we are a group of volunteers. So I, yes, we are all, we all have our own full-time jobs and our families and so forth, but we do this pretty much, you know, between the hours of 8 o'clock p.m. and 12 a.m., um, just off the wheel of just wanting to change the world. <laughs> That's a, that's a very very deep heart that you all have to do that. That's incredible. It's a, I have the most amazing team in the world, um, and you know it's with their efforts that we have been able to make an impact. Um, and so with that, I mean again we've consulted with the city of Austin um, to repeal uh, harmful ordinances like the juvenile curfew ordinance. We've facilitated um, task force to address the number of children, again, like we were talking about before, that are being charged with assault. Um, that a lot of our work also gets duplicated from city to city. 
um, here um, in Texas, um, we've been able to shoot down quickly bad ordinances that could have made a bigger problem of mass incarceration worse um, locally. <laughs> yeah, um, we've had, you know, been able to provide analysis and collect data on the impact of, you know, the responses that police have um, if there's like a mass shooting within a school. Um, gosh, it goes on and on. I guess the last one I'd like to kind of mention is that we also have been able to host um, these amazing conferences and we call it big data and community policing. Um, and this is just a time where we can elevate data and metrics to, to address how data intersects with community policing. And this is put on by one of you know, our team who's led by Precious Azure, who's amazing. Um, but these conferences have really been able to break down barriers and walls between um, more so advocate and activist communities and, you know, the police department. We, we our last one was actually held in Dallas, Texas. Um, just a couple, just a couple of months ago, and I don't, I'm not sure if you guys were kind of following what was going on back here in this in the, in the states, but we had a mass shooting um, in Dallas that involved police officers and also civilians that were shot as well during a march. Um, and you know, because of this big data community policing conference, because of the ability to use Pump to really create change within our city, we were able to bring together a lot of those folks that were marching and then also the police department um, in one room again to really do some community building um, and to identify evidence-based or evidence-informed solutions um, that are measurable. That's just incredible. I the, the the flow on effects from being able to do that, from breaking down barriers and bringing people together, bringing the evidence into it is one thing, but being able to hold the space for that to happen, I think is another thing that's just um, such a such a powerful contribution to make to a community, you know, holding that space for people to really talk with each other about what matters. Yeah, totally agree. Um, have you used Pump internally within Measure? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> and actually, today we have our um, our one of our our meetings to really assess our own metrics. I think continual assessment is important. Always mm -hmm. making sure that what we're measuring is actually meaningful for the time too. So what we measured in 2015 is not necessarily what we're measuring now. Um, we're, you know, as we reach our goals, we then kind of reassess it and create another results map and try to figure out what is what actually matters the most to us. Um, and so, yeah, some of like, just I guess one example for us is that we have a goal to increase communication between institutions and the people they serve. So some of those measures include like the number of attendees to measure conferences per event. Um, and we also measure like the percent increase in community members confidence to self-advocate. We have a, um, we have programming and a training called how to self-advocate um, or how to speak up for yourself. And we like to understand how people feel before having the training and then after having the training. In many cases, folks just don't know how to address an issue that is impacting them in their community. They don't even know in many cases that they can go down to City Hall and speak up, right? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, and that's, that's, an, that's something that is really important to us, um, that we empower our community with data and information in order to make them feel confident enough to self-advocate. And so, yeah, those right. are just a couple of measures that we use at Measure. <laughs> Tremendous! I love that you role model it within, you know, internally. You 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 believe so much in this use of evidence and information for for making decisions and making the world a better place. That you apply it to yourselves, not just it, it insist that other people do it. It's, it's great. Thank you. 
Mimi, any final words at all of wisdom um, that you might have uh, to share with other people uh, who are either using Pump or, or maybe considering it? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, our, our team at Measure, we are actively working in the process to you know, process data collected by agencies and areas where disparities um, exist, from policing to education and mental health um, and more. And we, we use these research reports and infographics to really start a conversation about disparities and to bring stakeholders and agencies together to seek these solutions and improve, and improve transparency, increase information sharing. Um, mm. We're, we're very active in our community. I'd hope that, you know, your listeners that and those that are watching this, um, this, uh, this information choose to use the pump methodology in ways that are non-traditional and that may not be for their regular job, but also to use them to impact change within their communities. I, I have to say, I am so excited um, to, to let you know that we measure, um, we're coming to sit Australia this month. Um, I will be serving as the keynote speaker at the Australian and New Zealand Society of Evidence-Based Policing Conference on the 25th and the 26th. So that's just great. <laughs> and I've, I've, I've been trying to think of a way that I'd be able to get to Sydney then to um, to meet with you. I haven't found a way yet, Mimi, but if I do, I'll let you know. It would be oh, great. Oh my to God. See that would be but how amazing. exciting. Have you been to Australia before? Never and never in my wildest dreams would I think that I would be going there to go teach a lot of, of police officers. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> great. Them. So I am so excited to 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 go share and to um to community build with um you know kind of like the more for me, you know, international audience of police officers yeah. that, that just want to do an amazing job and that just want to serve their communities well and that just sometimes, you know, may need to hear um, the other side, right, on what that engagement should mm -hmm. look like. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I, I guess, too, the best advice that I can give to those considering the this method to create reform or change would be to like just to drop all expectations of what to measure until you allow the community to use their voice um, the other the other part of that would be uh, is to be willing to listen you know people are there are experts in their own experience um, and designing measures is to me one of the best ways that you can discover them yeah, I love that I've always thought that measure design should be collaborative like that. And all through this entire story that you've shared with us today, Mimi, that, that undercurrent of collaboration, of mutual respect, of working together in a synergistic way to come up with clarity about the goals that matter to us all and how we'll measure them and how we'll use the measures to keep getting things improved. That That is just a, a brilliant message. And I'm so glad that it's been working so well for you and your, your measure team and also for for the parts of the Austin community that you're working with. So thank you very much for sharing this, Mimi. I really appreciate it. Oh, likewise. And I appreciate you for the development of this process because it literally is changing. It's changing the world. We talk about that all the time in our community that we just want to change the world. And, you know, through, um, through measurable um, results and, you know, really having a process to do it is extremely encouraging in this work. Tremendous. I wish you all the best. I know you guys will go on to bigger and better things even still. Thanks so much. Well, the, as, long as, as we move forward, we're going to keep measuring on the entire way. So, yeah. <laughs>